Welcome back to Enthador, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress version 0.42. And this is Legends Mode. Now normally with Anvil Quested, I did episodes like this as an appendix, but I think that confused some people. So I'm just going to go ahead and have these episodes kind of interspersed with the rest of Sand Pillar. But I wanted to take a look at the recent conflict that we discussed in the last episode and take a look at what's been going on. So let's show the map here. There's our fortress of Sand Pillar. And I think the best way to get an idea of what's been going on is to go back to the beginning. So when we first started Sand Pillar, this is what the world looked like. And a year later, nothing much had changed. A year after that, again, nothing much had changed. Actually, we're at 149, so we somehow went far back. Let's go, okay, 150. This is when we started Sand Pillar. Also, it looks like they take, or they retook the Fortress of Blockade Steels because there was something there initially, but then they took it as part of the civilization. So then in 151, you'll notice that two of these fortresses here have been darkened, which means that they were attacked. And that is confirmed when you add another year to them and find that they are no longer part of the civilization. And then now oh, this one's been darkened, add a year to that. Well, actually we can't, because that's where we are. But these two right here have been darkened, which means they're being attacked. Now there used to be like attack maps where they show you like who's attacking where to, to where, but it... I'm having a hard time finding it. Let's look at Dyke Assault. That's one of the fortresses that they told us was lost. So in 152, there was the Sieges of Routing and the Conquest of Dyke Assault as a result of the Sieges of Routing. And that was done by the Conflict of Cudgels of the Putrid Flies of the Mangy Spiders. <laughs> okay. And they only killed four people, it looks like, but they managed to, despite that fact, take over... A fortress of 97 dwarves, and it was abandoned in 151. The gory monster of the putrid flies. Of the mangy spider. Okay. But if we look at the sieges of routing... Okay, see, it doesn't really... Normally it'd show us like a little dotted line, I thought. Maybe battles? No, no, wars... What did that do? It, that just made things a little darker. Maybe don't toggle sieves? That doesn't really help either. I'm actually not entirely sure here how to get these. I remember seeing war charts where it would show you exactly what happened in the war. Let's just show the map as it stands. Let's remove sieves. All right, no one's here. Now let's look at wars. Battles. Okay, look, look at all these battles, man. But no... Okay, so we can see a little bit here, like you can see this little dotted line here showing that the mangy spider is also attacking the carmine saffron. But apparently that doesn't work here. Let's let's go back a year. Ah, here we go. So look at this. Let's zoom in. The mangy spider is going nuts here. It's attacking all of these different fortresses. It conquered this one. But let me just look at all of this. They're going on the offensive. So this war, which was a cold war, it looks like, for a number of years, has now turned very, very hot. Go back to 150. Nothing. 151. Just tons of war. Luckily, things seem to have calmed down in 152. Though, as you can see here, a lot of fortresses are being left to ruin. Now, I want to quickly look at our dwarves, just to see if there's anything interesting. And I didn't really find much. Vamp McVamperson, of course has a ton of kills to his name. But strangely, none notable, and they're not really ascribed to him as kills. They're just unsolved murders. So, even though he's obviously listed at the top of the list of miscellaneous kills, it doesn't actually say here in his bio that he actually killed these people. Now, another thing that kind of sucks, let's go to notable kills. Another thing that kind of sucks is that any dwarf that I rename loses its family tree. You'll notice that all of these dwarves here have family trees that you can look at. Well, Mebzith doesn't, but most of them have family trees. 
But if I've named a dwarf, unfortunately, I've, I've, I have not seen a named dwarf that has a family tree that's working. I'm pulling up Sharky Mouth because out of all of our dwarves, he has the most notable kills. Three. And they're all murders. Two dwar or three dwarves, all in the same place, which is Black Chained. Then you go past Sharky Mouth. And I wish there's... I, I feel like in the old Legends viewer, if you were to go into search and type in a little... one of these guys, it would only allow people from your fortress, right? Because that's how their names start whenever you rename them yourself, but it obviously is not working now, so it doesn't help at all, actually. So there's no way to really single out dwarves that you have named yourself. I wish there was a way to do that so I could just look at a list of our dwarves instead of having to go through this giant list of everybody just to find our dwarves. Now, I guess there, there's a way I could do that. If I named every dwarf, like, two letters, underscore, and then their name, all I'd have to look for is those two letters, and that would work, but that's kind of lame. So I wish... I wish the person who wrote this program, they seem to keep updating it. So maybe if, if you know the person or something, any way that you can just look at the dwarves that are under your care, that you've renamed or whatever, that would be fantastic. So the next one on the list is Bullzom. Bullzom has participated in three wars. He, was, he aided in defense against the Mangy Spider and won three times. And that was all in 151. So before coming to Sandpillar, Bolzom was defending different sites. What site was he defending? Forest Tame. So not too far from Sandpillar, kind of in the northern part of the civilization. All right, but he he killed a dwarf and a human, both struck. So I, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between struck and murdered. I guess in Struck, it was uh, in battle, so it's kind of a legitimate death, but I don't understand. Like, I wish they'd give you the motivations for these murders. Like, just to say that somebody murdered a couple people, was it in anger? Like, well, you know, was he, was he being a bad guy? Like, is this, is this like a bad murder or like a good murder? Meaning, no murder is a good murder, but I mean, maybe what the game means murder is he killed a goblin who was like spying on the town he was in, you know? I mean, that, that could be a good murder, so... Don't know. Throthgrod is next. Throthgrod actually has some good musician skills. Great paper maker. Woo! So he has two kills. The dwarf Rovod Inchknife and the human Gassin Submerged Savior. Both murdered in 111. So another murderer. We have a lot of murderers in our fortress, unfortunately. Drakatoter has... Two murders, both dwarves. Hephaestus. Two murders, both humans. Ziza Deep Deep Spell and Siva Honor Sweeps. And Siva Honor Sweeps was murdered by Hephaestus in Black Chain. So it looks like a lot of these murders are taking place in Black Chain. Okay, so Black Chain is a dark fortress led by the goblins. So it's almost like all these murders took place by these dwarves and then they left. Like maybe they were dwarves that were kidnapped by the goblins and they ended up murdering things for maybe the goblins asked them to or who knows, but they somehow found their way because all these murders took place in the same place, which is Black Chain. So it's really interesting that we had so many of our citizens here in Sandpillar that came from Blackchained. I wish I wish it told you more about it. I want to know what happened at Blackchained. I want to know why all these people were murdered and and what here. You know, even with the expanded data dump, they still have things that say unknown written content or unknown job, become an unknown job, which kind of sucks. But it's still, any any progress is good. It doesn't you know doesn't matter how slow you move as long as you don't stop according to Archer. All right, so, yeah, it's not going to tell me, but apparently, we'll see, the dwarf Monom Coast Links, or Coast Inks, was denied an apprenticeship under the goblin Snowdub Malign Basic due to the jealousy of the goblin Ingo Kang Demon Rasps. Okay, so an apprenticeship, that's weird. They constructed an unknown structure? Well, 
Either way, all of our murderous dwarves, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt because they seem like refugees from a particularly horrible goblin fortress that they managed to get out of. So, you know what, folks? I'm willing to overlook their murders as being a product of their environment, and I'm not going to blame them for those. Now, we haven't been attacked by any notable creatures, so there's nothing really to look up there. But one thing I also want to do with this episode... dun da 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 Armok Vision. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Sand Pillar. And you can see it's a black sand desert. This is kind of the bird's eye view flying toward it. You can see that we have our fortifications mostly built up. Almost ready to go. This is our like inner courtyard area. As you can see, the giant pit looks particularly good in 3D. Let's see, I can use the right mouse button to scroll around. The sky always looks a little weird in this, but it is getting better. Like now it has shadows. I'm, I'm With the new computer, I'm able to do this on the absolute highest quality setting. But there's still a few things I don't like. Like I wish this would just go all the way down. Like I wish there wasn't a certain limit. And also if you do move down, all of a sudden you start losing everything else. Like I wish this would like be black or just something. It just feels weird. Especially because in this game you spend a lot of your time underground. I don't like the idea that it's kind of fading out like this. But let's so it looks better if you move up a little bit. So okay, here we go. We've moved up. Oh here, sorry, we didn't even see the fortifications in the previous view. We just saw the wall. So here's the fortifications. They're slowly coming around. You can see the saguaro cactuses that are like five stories tall. Never seen cactuses like that in my life, but there you go. So let's let's get oh no I'm a little fast here. Okay, so here's kind of the entrance to the fortress. Wait, I want to go down a little bit more, but that's... That. I think I figured out a way to do this when I did this for Anvil Quested, but anyway. Oh, goodness. Let's, let's do it that way. Can we... Okay. Well, the mouse scroll wheel is, like, zooming me in here. Maybe if I just zoom in a lot... Yeah, that looks... that seems to be working. Perfect. All right. So this is kind of the entrance. This is the secret enemy's entrance. I guess these are just rocks. So the main entrance is here. You've got the two statues on either end. And then you move down. And then there's the main bridge. We're going to have to move down for that. Okay. There's our dog who's guarding the place. That's pretty cool. Like they didn't when the, whoever made this program needs to create like an FPS mode where you just you can move around the world and you can't just fly around that, that you're limited like you can't walk through walls that would, and it, it just it made the sure the clipping was all taken care of cuz obviously we shouldn't be seeing the ceiling right now but there's nothing we can do about it yeah oh that's interesting made things a bit lighter so there's somebody there homer this is where the merchants do their trading. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, I don't like the clipping. You know, I don't like the fact that we could see above us here. Oh, well, shit. Okay, that's done now. So let's move up a little bit. All right, great. So this is our tavern, which feels a lot more spacious in 3D than it does actually in the game itself. And here's the end of the tavern. That might be Jaxi. I don't know. We used to, that one guy had a name. Nobody else does for some reason. Maybe because I zoomed in too close. But then this is where the bedrooms are. I don't know what a P is. Oh, a boar. Okay, cool. It's cool they tell me what the boar is. Why he's chilling in the in the inn? I don't know. I gotta fix that. Let's see if I. But yeah, it doesn't say anybody's name here. Well, there's. It says his name. Can't even see that though. All right, whatever. Work in progress, folks. Work in progress. Still a really cool utility. Oh, here we got some names. We got Garai. Oh, I can, you can only see the name from the floor above it. I bet. Yeah. So if I want to see the names of these people, I got to go up a little bit. And there we go. So it's not not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty good. But let's go back outside because oh wow, I like the shadows. Whoever whoever did this did the perfect 
shadows. It looks great, you know? I just wish it didn't clip so much. There's the good man, Axak, and he's here at the furnace. One of these is a wood furnace, and one of these is a smelter. And there's a new design on them that look really cool. I get it. So the mouse wheel really dictates what you see and what you don't. Oh, there's our little river there. All right, but I want to I wanna delve down into the pit. So let's go pit diving. All right. Ooh, oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. Uh, but where's the, the bottom of the pit? Why, why are you stopping? Okay, there's part of the bottom of the pit. Why? Why isn't it showing the bottom of the pit over here? What the hell? Well, anyways, that's the that's the the column holding up our enemy's entrance, as you can see here, which they're supposed to fall off of. So if you're an enemy and you're trying to harm the citizens of Anvil Quested and you're marching around here, you hit a trap and you're like, oh no! Plop. Oh, look, there's everybody. Hi, everybody. Yeah, the, the clipping is just... Maybe I'm just not using this tool right. I don't know. But, and I don't know why all of a sudden the floor is missing from here. That upsets me. It shouldn't, it shouldn't do that. I don't understand why they would only show me this tiny portion of the floor. Yeah, there's... There's, yeah, there's just no no reason for it. But, well, okay, so cool. Here's our bedrooms. More bedrooms. There's our dormitory right there. Ooh, I like the I like the beds. The little symbols on them. That's cool. Okay, and oh, there's our... He moved really fast. There's our crypt. And let's see, that should be the final resting place of Birdie Bop. But it looks like they don't have icons for... Slabs, or oh, I'm, I'm actually inside of her crypt now. Ooh, that's a little creepy. Yeah, so they don't have they don't have icons for slabs or coffins yet. Well, let's see if we go down here. Yeah. What the heck? I'm I'm a little disappointed. I'm sure there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's a button I need to push. Maybe I just have I've done something wrong. I'll read the. The read me. But this is this would be the way out, you know? This would be the part where there's the, the drawbridge that leads out of the fortress into the into the pit. There's some more. There's some more of the pit bottom. Oh, is it showing it to me? No. Just this tiny little portion of it. It's so weird. Well, anyways, folks. That is oops, let's go up. That is Armok Vision. And I'm sure it'll get better as time goes on. Probably by the end of the series, it'll be a lot better. We'll be able to see more things. Maybe it's the graphics settings I have. Maybe I shouldn't use the highest settings. Maybe if I use lower settings, I'd be able to see more. I don't know. But there's our there's our home. Our sand pillar. Again, I wish the 3D effect went all the way down. But we have another tool to use, and I want to go ahead and use it. So let's close out of this. And uh, I tried to do this once and it crashed so let's just see what happens here stone sense all right please don't crash all right so well, here we go okay what's happening oh, I'm, I'm moving up and down it's been a while since i've used this tool is it the arrow? Yeah, okay, the arrows moves you. There's Kriegmeister, King Tip, Dwarf Comic. So, oh yeah, this is this is our smoothing this out right here. This is our kind of Hall of History. This is our Hall of Artifacts, and this is our Memorial Hall. Down at the bottom of the pit here, we have Zoron, Ixchel. And com just coming out, we have Kelimthor and Solius. Over here, we have Stagar the Goat. This is the bottom of our pit. I get it. Let's, um... Oh, goodness. Didn't want to do that. Holy moly. 
All right, this is our crypt floor from a different angle. Or no, the same angle. And we're going up, there's our bedroom. So oh, it looks so nice now. The icons have gotten so much better. Although I don't know if necessarily purple is the perfect color for siltstone. But hey, whatever. Oh, you know what purple means? No, we know what that is. Purple is, is placement mode. So these actually aren't there yet. The purple just means it's a placeholder and they're gonna be there eventually. Yep, that makes sense. So everything purple needs to be built at some point. There's our cistern, our wells, our hospital. Yeah, I'm building tables in the hospital. I've lost a couple dwarves from tavern brawls. Drives me nuts, tavern brawls. I mean, why would they do something like that? But yeah, they get in tavern brawls, they get injured. The hospital's packed with people. Like, this is not enough rooms. And uh, there's silly injuries, but if they don't get fixed right away, they end up dying. It's ridiculous. Okay, here's the dining hall. There's a cat in there. Tyrone Lannister. Thorgrim. Pinkie Pie. Sareth. Alice. Zack. Zaz. Adil. Sea Mansplitter. Dracototer. This is a uh, brew. This is drink. And this is cooked meals. All right, this is the workshop floor. Storage floor. Here's the tavern and the merchant area. There's a dog guarding the front door. Here's the enemy's entrance. And here's our, our team of enterprising military dwarves. We have a combination of marks dwarves and melee dwarves. I created a mixed melee squad. What that means is I basically took any dwarf that had any type of military skill and I assigned them to this squad. They all have matching armor, but they all have whatever weapon they're good at. So there's a couple of macemen, a spearmen, a couple of axemen, and a hammermen. Actually, I don't think there is an axeman, or axe dwarf, I should say. There's mace dwarfs, one spear dwarf, and I think two or three hammer dwarves. This is the second sand floor. Now that I know it can't be a tree farm, because it's not tall enough, I just kind of excavated it. Maybe I'll use it for pigtail farming, or once I open up the caverns to store the animals of citizens of ours. Okay, here's the kind of farm floor. There's all of our dogs. We have a ton more dogs. I like how they have different colors. That's awesome. And then there's all of, our, all of our chickens. And there's the named pets. This is our farming operation. Here's the, uh, the outside with our little area with the drawbridge protecting it. And the different stockpiles. The Goodman Axe Act, as we saw in Armok Vision. And finally, here's the beginnings of our fortifications. So now that we're here, let's take a look at... Can we honor it? I always just wish I could see more of this. Like, I wish you could pull back, you know, and just see things from a far distance. But, okay, there's our dog we've got chained up. Those are the statues. Those are the saguaro cactuses. And then here's our little stream that we... There's our... Where's it? There's our built floor. And I think somewhere. Our built floor that leads our water to the fortress, which we could actually see... If I go down, there it is. Yeah, there it goes. And there's its tunnel leading into the fortress. That's pretty cool. That's a staircase up and out. So yeah, maybe I'll make this wall longer, both walls longer, just to provide us more of an early warning system. I definitely want to put a road here. I kind of want to wait for one invasion because then I know that once that invasion is gone, that we could start going outside and building stuff. I'm afraid to put a lot of dwarves outside because at any moment an invasion can happen and they won't be able to maybe get inside in time. So again, I wish it showed a bit more. I think this tool actually has, let's see, maybe question mark, is it? That gives you the, oh, here we go, perfect, perfect. The two key increases the segment. Ah, yes, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Look at that, folks, wow. There we go, you can see the depth. The depth and the gloriousness of Sand Pillar. That is so cool. And then that's our enemy's entrance. As you can see, I made I made real sure that these things that I created looked good in 3D. So instead of just having a floor, I put stone underneath it so it really looks solid and, and realistic in, in three dimensions. Although the fact that it has grass growing on it is kind of funny. Once I put the traps on there, maybe that won't be the same. But yeah, I think I mentioned in one of the episodes that when you channel out desert, it turns into grassland. So, I mean, the dwarves don't have anything to worry about as far as global warming. All they have to do is channel out all the deserts and they'll turn into fertile <laughs> fertile grasslands right away. <laughs> what else can we do here? Creature moods? Really? How's the dog feeling? No, well, maybe it's only a dwarf. Oh, there we go. Oh, Rectangle, why aren't you happy? 
the game says you're happy. Huh. Maybe maybe it's a function that doesn't work really well yet. Toggle OSD. F2. There was OF, OSD. Oh, that's just the overlay. All right, fine. Oh, zoom. Comma and full stop. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, you know what, though? Yeah, so you can zoom out, but it still will only show you the same little square. So it really doesn't matter. Dang it. Oh, for a moment there, I was so excited. I was like, yes, we're going to see it all. <laughs> we can rotate. That's cool. And yeah, I guess that's toggle stockpiles. I can turn them off, I guess. Actually, I kind of like the idea of turning them off. Toggle designations. Oh, look at all of our dogs. The little tails are wagging. They're having a good time. Toggle occlusion. I don't know what that means. Toggle creature profs. Ooh, hello. Oh, professions. Neat. Can you... Oh, yes, you can toggle zones. All right, I think it looks so much better when you don't see the little squares for zones and stockpiles. There's our kitchen and our still. Look at the little icon they have for the still with the little, like... It really looks like a still. That's awesome. Good show. Good show, whoever put this together. Now, if only the guys who worked on this can get together with the guys who worked on Armok Vision, I think we'd be totally in business here. Let's go down. Oh, I love these little dwarf icons. Fred of Valde looks, looks awesome. He's a little axe here. It's the best. Oh, cool. They're based on, they're based on what they're what their actual profession is. Oh, sweet. Okay, so Kabuis is a is a Marks Dwarf. Fredevald is a Hammer Dwarf. Yikli is a Marks Dwarf. Mace Dwarf. I don't know what the guys who aren't anything. Maybe they're just recruits. So they haven't been... They haven't used the weapon enough to get good at it. And then our one Spear Dwarf there is Throthgrad. Sweet. There's our... Oh, the archery targets look awesome, too. Who's, who's the ghost here? Kratos Shadowbane. I don't know why you're a little ghost, but that's cool, I guess. Do we have do we have one for bards? No, I guess not, but they still look pretty cool. Everybody looks everybody looks really cool. Let's, um... Oh, hello. Nah, that's a little too zoomed. I think that's a bit much zoom for me. Well, let's go see... I wonder if... There, there's Vampy McVamperson. <laughs> He's trapped in his, his little cell there. He seems to be doing okay. He's wearing a white hat. All right, there's a forge. These are the two gem workshops. I guess those are still a work in progress. No, wait, no. These are the gem workshops. Those look good. So what the hell are these? Oh, you know what? Maybe these are, haven't been constructed yet. They're the... I think these are... I got a smelter and a glass forge, I think, coming here. So maybe this just means they haven't been built yet. That's probably what that means, yeah. So then over here we have are two masons workshops and we have the mechanics workshop then we have the carpenters workshop and the two crafts dwarfs workshops and here we should have yeah there's our our clothier and our leather worker that's awesome and what are these two? oh yeah these are two more masons workshops oh because i'm like they look different it's probably because they're, they're made out of a different material so they actually change the workshop color depending on what material it's made out of that is really, really cool. And there's the legendary artifact weapon rack. Oh, let's go see the bed. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to go up. There's another ghost, Zarek. A lot of ghosts. There's the bed. There's the legendary, legendary artifact bed. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has gone on almost 30 minutes, but I hope you enjoyed this 3D tour through the beginnings of our fortress. I'm sure I could do better once I familiarize myself with these tools a bit more, learn a bit more about Armok Vision, and maybe I could get it to look really, really nice. Because I saw Daz did an episode with Armok Vision. He was, like, super high above his fortress, and you saw everything. You saw the whole mountain. Like, it, it showed multiple Z-levels, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here, but I will figure it out, folks. So once again, I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.